In this video, I'm going to show you how to transform this hamburger menu into a close icon. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoy this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a blank CodePen project, and I'm going to show you this full tutorial from beginning to end. So to start off, I'm going to start by putting my body tags in the HTML, and then I'm going to put a div, which will just be a container that will house all of the elements. So the first thing we have to decide is what kind of element we want to be on our page. So this icon will transform from being a hamburger menu to a close icon. And so this icon will have one of two states. It'll either be the hamburger or it will be the close icon. So initially we want the hamburger icon to be visible. And then once the hamburger menu is tapped on, then it will transform into the close icon. So we can kind of think of it that the icon has two states. It's either in the on state or the off state. So we can think that the initial state is the hamburger icon, and when it is tapped on, it will transform into the close icon. So in that kind of way, we want to pick an element that has one of two states. It's either in an on state or an off state. And one kind of HTML element that has that kind of property is a checkbox. So we're actually going to base the functionality off of a checkbox. And so that checkbox will have an on or an off state and then we will use that to determine which state the icon is in. So for the HTML, what we're going to put in is an input and the type of input is not going to be text, but instead it will be checkbox. And then I'm also going to want to include an ID on here and I'm just going to call it toggle. So as you can see, now we have this little checkbox in the HTML and so I can select it and now it's checked and then unselect it and then now it's not checked anymore. Now we don't want the actual checkbox to be the trigger. Instead, we're going to want these lines to be visible that will represent the checkbox. So in addition to the input, we're also going to have to have a label tag and the label will represent the input for the checkbox. So that will also be a clickable element that we'll use. So we will essentially create the lines as the label element and it will behave like the checkbox and turn on and off as well. So the first parameter that we have to put in is what is it a label for? Well, it's a label for the element that has an ID of toggle. So that's why I'm putting toggle right there. So that's it. This is all the HTML code for the project and the rest will be completed within CSS. So this may be a little confusing right now, but I think as we go through it, it'll make a little bit more sense. So within the CSS, first I'm going to define certain properties for the body and then I'm going to define properties for the label and then we're going to animate it. So first for this body, I'm going to set a background color and I'm going to set the background color of the project to black. And then for the actual elements in the project, I want it to be displayed as a grid with all of the content in the center. So I'm writing justify content center and then align item center as well. And then I want the height of this to be 100% of the viewport height. If you're new to Grid, I have a whole crash course video that goes over all of the basics, so I'll link it in the description below. So next, I'm going to add some properties for the label tag so we can actually see it on the screen. So I'm going to write label, and then I'm going to add certain properties for this label. So I'm going to add a width of 12M, a height of 1.5M, a background color, I'm going to set a position for this and I want the position of this to actually be absolute. So now we actually see this white line on the page. And so when I tap this line, this is actually the label for this checkbox input. So if I tap this area, now the checkbox is checked. And when I tap it again, it becomes unchecked. So we're going to create pseudo elements of this line that will then animate depending on if it's been selected and tapped on or if the checkbox is unselected. So as you can see, as I tap on this bar, that input changes from being checked to unchecked. So we are essentially going to use that state of that checkbox to determine which state of the animation that these lines are in. And that will determine if it looks like a hamburger menu or if it looks like a close icon. So we're going to take advantage of this property. 
Now, one small thing, as I hover over this, it doesn't really look tappable because the cursor doesn't change. So underneath that label area, I'm going to change the cursor to pointer. So then it actually looks more like an interactive element. Next, I'm going to add pseudo elements to this label. Initially, I'm going to want this to look like the hamburger menu. And in order for it to look like a hamburger menu, it has to contain three lines. But I'm going to want an other line above it and one line below it. So in order to create these two other lines, I'm actually going to use pseudo elements. Pseudo elements allows you to add some modifications to the way that something looks on the page without ever modifying the HTML. So you could create three separate div lines that all animate, but instead I'm going to use this one label with a before property and an after property, and then when it's checked, I want the lines to animate depending on which state that the icon is in. So I'm going to write and before and then and after. So it's saying reference this label and then add a property before and add a property after. Now, whenever you use pseudo elements, you have to include the content tag, even if it's empty. So I'm writing content, which is actually going to be an empty tag with nothing in it. And then I want the width and the height to be the same as that original line that we have. So I'm just duplicating those values. So it's 12M and then the height is 1.5M. The background color for this is also white. The position of these are also absolute. And I want these to be display block. Now I'm going to add some individual characteristics for each property. So for that before property, I'm going to add a top margin, making the left zero. Now, if you're wondering how I got these values, it was a lot of just manipulation and you can use percentages, M's, REMs, or pixels to determine this but I just used a percentage for this and I just had to tweak it around a little bit so then it looked how I want it to look. And then for the after property, I'm going to include similar elements. So I'm going to do a bottom margin and a left one for this one as well. So now we actually see the before element and the after element. So now when I tap on this, this checkbox goes to the check state. And when I tap it again, it becomes unchecked. So now we can use this input of being checked or unchecked to actually determine which state the element is in and then it can animate from one state to the next state. So in order to do that, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to reference that ID of toggle and then I want to know if it's checked. So I'm going to write colon checked. And if it's checked, I'm going to want it to change the color of the icon, let's say. So that way we know that an effect is happening. So if that toggle is checked, I want it to look at a sibling element in the HTML. So as you can see, input is here and label is here. It's not a parent-child relationship. They're actually siblings because they're all on the same level playing field. So instead of doing the carrot or anything else, it's a sibling, so I have to use the tilde sign. I'm going to look at something that is a sibling to that toggle ID. And I want to look at the label. And then I'm going to look at the before pseudo elements. Let's say this first one on top. Let's change the color of this to red if this thing is checked on. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to write label and then before. So if this toggle is checked, I want the background color to be red. So I tap on it and now that top one becomes red. So I know that this code is working. Next, I'm going to do a very similar thing for the after property. So I'm going to make this after red also. So if I tap on it, now the first one and the last one become red. So now to transform this from a hamburger menu into a close icon, I'm actually going to want this middle line to disappear. And then I want this first one and the third one to rotate so that it looks like a close icon. So in order to do that, I'm going to copy this code and paste it. And for the regular label, so not the before or the after, but just the actual middle label, instead of it turning red, I want it to actually be black. So it looks like it completely disappears. So now it looks like it's not even visible on the page. You can also do stuff with opacity as well, but I'm just going to leave the color as black for now. And now to actually get this to look like a close icon, we're going to want to transform it by applying a rotation. So the way that we're going to do that is over here where it's verifying if the toggle is checked, I'm going to apply a transform and rotate it in the Z direction. 
and I'm going to put a particular degree here. Again, I had to do some experimentation to get these numbers right, so it's a little bit about trial and error to see what looks good, so you just have to play around with the numbers and see what you like. I'm also going to want to apply this rotation to the after property as well, but instead of it being a positive 41 degrees, I'm going to make it a negative 41 degrees. As you can see, we're getting a little bit closer there. It, it's still off, but it's definitely getting closer to how we want it to look. And part of the reason why is because of the way that it's actually being rotated. This one's going up in this way, and this one's just going down in this way. So I have to change the transform origin of this before and after property above. So next to this before property, I'm just going to write transform origin, and I'm going to write left and then top. So it'll actually rotate from this point. And then for the after property, I want it to rotate from here. So I want to change it to left bottom. I also want to make sure that the original state has a rotation in the Z direction of zero. So I'm just going to write transform rotate Z zero degree, just to verify that in that original state, I want the rotation to be zero. And then I only want it to rotate when it's in that checked position. So now if I tap on it, it looks like a close icon. So this is looking really good so far, but there's no kind of transition between the two states. It either goes from the hamburger menu directly to the close icon and then back to the hamburger menu, but I actually want it to animate. So in order to do that, in the before and after where we declare the original properties, here I'm going to apply a transition. And for this transition, I'm just going to write all as then affect all the properties. I'm going to make it 0.6 seconds, and then I want it to have a particular animation curve to it. Now I want this animation curve to be applied throughout the design, so I'm actually going to declare it as a variable at the top. So I'm going to go to the top of my CSS and write root, and then declare a CSS variable. And declaring CSS variables are really easy. You just have to write dash dash and then the name of it. So I'm writing animation curve. And then I'm just writing a particular animation curve that I like. So then I'm taking this variable and I'm going to apply that variable to the transition. So the way that you use a variable is you just write var and then open and close parentheses. And then in the parentheses, you just put the name of the variable. So now if I tap on it, it actually animates. We're definitely getting there. I also want the actual label to animate as well. So underneath this, I'm going to reference that toggle. And for this one, I'm just going to say that whenever the toggle changes, I'm going to want to apply a transition to that label element. So not particularly when the toggle is checked, but just when the toggle is referenced at all, I want to apply this transition because I want it to play forwards when it's turning into the close icon and when it's returning back to the hamburger menu icon. So here, I'm going to apply a similar transition I want this one to be a little bit faster though, so it's going to be 0.5 seconds. And this one will also have the same animation curve. So now if I tap on it, it turns into the close icon. And when I tap on it again, it returns back to the hamburger menu. So the last thing I wanna do is remove this checkbox icon because we don't need it anymore. I like to leave it on the screen to validate what I'm doing as I move along so I know if it's actually working. But everything's working now, so I don't need it anymore. So for that input, I'm just going to write display none. And once I do, it becomes invisible. So now we have this animating hamburger menu into a close icon. So there you go. That's how I animated a hamburger menu into a close icon. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.